Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a very exciting video for you. I am finally going to show you my entire bag collection. This is over an hour of going through every single bag in my collection. I will be separating it by brands and time stamping everything. So go ahead and get a seat, get a drink, get a snack, get comfortable because we are going to be going through every single bag I own and it's going to be long, but it's going to be fun. I will follow up with a separate video showing you how I organize my bags. I do my best, you guys, but I like to have all my bags pretty much out on display because I like to see what I have so I know what my options are. Some of these bags you might see in the background of my videos. I have a lot of them hanging on my door and then I have some up on my shelves over here behind my couch. So just go ahead and settle in and we're going to be going through every single one of these. All right, so this first grouping of my bags are my Gucci bags and then my one and only Prada bag, which is this shapeless blob back here. This is a denim Prada tote bag. I don't know the name of it. It has the black Prada logo embroidered on here and then has this dark leather shoulder strap and that runs along these sides. The bottom has the nail heads, then just a plain back. Inside is just a bottomless pit of a bag. Here is the dust bag. And then it just has one zip pocket right here. So you can see the lining has that leather, with the Prada stamped inside. And then it has the nylon lining. And yeah, I use this all the time. I got this when I started my first real job out of college. And this was my workhorse daily work tote. I've also used this as a carry-on bag on flights. I just find it was so comfortable. I didn't have to deal with two shoulder straps where you know one is always falling off. The only downside with this, other than that it's just a hobo, unorganized kind of bottomless pit of a bag, the denim gets very worn out, which is something that happens with any denim bag. You know, I have a denim Deauville Chanel tote, and so I have to also be Worried about the corners rubbing off. And then with denim, you can see the white threads coming through. Same thing at the top here, right there. So yeah, just a very practical, useful bag. Not the prettiest in the collection, but this has definitely served its purpose. I should probably bring this out again. These types of hobo bags, I really need an organizer inside. So maybe I'll repurpose one of my Samorga organizers and stick it in here and bring this back out into the light. This is my one and only Prada bag. Now, the first Gucci bag I ever purchased is the original vintage Gucci belt bag. This was made popular by the original Sex and the City. Sarah Jessica Parker's character Carrie wore this a few times and I was like, oh my gosh, how cool, I want one. <laughs> I just thought it was so practical. Even then I like to be hands-free. So I got this and I use this a lot in, I think I was still in high school, I'm pretty sure. And I even remember using this at an amusement park. I was in AP physics. And at the end of the year, you know, we go on a field trip and you do science experiments, labs on the roller coasters. And so I was like, oh, okay, I need to be hands-free. I'm gonna use my Gucci belt bag. <laughs> so I used this and it was really helpful to be hands-free. Here is the one zip pocket. There's the stamp tag. If you can read that, let me know what it means. I'm sure it's the date stamp similar to LV. It has the Gucci made in Italy. I didn't like this pocket because it's Velcro. And so if you have something in here, you have to be careful that it doesn't catch on the Velcro. But in here, I just have the satin dust bag from back then. And then the back pocket is this long zip pocket that runs the length of the entire bag. So this does hold a current iPhone Pro. When this bag came out, it was when phones were really tiny and I had the Motorola Razor, I think. So I'd stick it in one of these pockets. And I warn people who are looking for this original vintage Gucci belt bag, be careful of the straps on the side. So this actually was a replacement waist strap. I used this so much that at one point, the sides of the bag where the strap was attached to the bag here, it was separating and fraying right here. And so I brought it into Gucci. They were super helpful and they replaced the entire strap. And so it looked good as new. It was free of charge. But what I didn't like was that the buckle was completely replaced. You can hear it. It feels like it's metal, but it's not metal. It's like a very heavy duty plastic. Whereas the original buckle was a solid heavy metal. It's nice that they replaced this, but I wish they could have kept the original 
hardware because that wasn't messed up. It just was the strap, like the webbing nylon strap. I wish they could have just replaced that, but keep the hardware, but they replaced everything, so. And next up is my Gucci Teal Velvet Marmont bag. I did a video about this, and for a lot of these, I did a video about it, so I'll try to link it, but just go through my playlist and see. I did an unboxing video of this, and it ended up being kind of a fail <laughs> because I got this from Fashion File and it ended up being, in my mind, defective. And I'll show you very soon why. So this bag was slightly used. It was listed as something like excellent condition. It has the gold, kind of a tarnished old gold hardware. Here is the back, it has that heart. Now it is velvet and so these chains have just been sitting on it and causing an impression. That's fine, like I don't mind that. And actually I probably should store this with the chains inside. That's my fault. But when I unboxed it, I was really bummed because the bottom was completely like, had this indentation and it's still there. And I guess that's just what Gucci is known for. You see that indent right there? It wasn't disclosed in the listing. The listing said indentations but there were indentations all over the bag. When they showed pictures in the listing of the bottom part of the bag, it was covered by the shoulder straps. So like they had the bottom bag and then they had the strap position like this or something like that where it was covering it. So I was really disappointed, but I didn't want to return it because I actually have matching blue teal velvet Gucci sandals that I loved. So I decided to keep it and that's fine. I just kind of made my peace with the defect. So I still have the fashion file tags in here. And there is the inside. It has that really pretty salmon pink satin lining. And the original Gucci tags in here. Yeah, unfortunately not the best experience opening this. This was from fashion file, but I still like it. And I ended up not returning it. I just kind of deal with the indentation and it honestly doesn't really bother me when I use it. It's okay, but just something that I noticed. And it's something that makes me now going forward when I buy something from a reseller, I just, triple check and double check the condition always. All right, now these two bags I actually got from the Gucci outlet in the Woodbury Common Premium Outlets in New York. And these were actually shown in my very first video ever on my YouTube channel. <laughs> I went on kind of a shopping spree at the outlets and I just loved the Blooms print and I missed out on it from the Gucci retail store, but I was so glad that I found these at the outlet. So I ended up getting both of these. This is the reversible Gucci Blooms tote bag and it is reversible, but it is honestly such a pain to reverse it. I have never worn it reversed. I really only carried it this way. And I like that it has a little ID tag there. And I just love the color. I actually also bought matching espadrilles in the blue blooms and a scarf or like a bandana type, like a scarf. This is the pink Gucci blooms Boston bag and they had a larger size of it. And I usually would go for the larger size, but I didn't really like the shape of it. It's instead of just being overall larger, I felt like the larger one was just longer. And so it had a different vibe, I think. So anyway, I opted for the smaller one. I love the leather lining. And I like that this opens the zipper all the way around on both sides. So it has a wider opening than, you know, for example, the Speedy bag, which only opens right at the top. And so it's kind of a narrower opening. This has a really pretty suede interior. And then it has this longer crossbody shoulder strap. I think this would have been really pretty if it had gold hardware too. And then it has the D-rings on both sides to attach the crossbody strap. And this bag too, I also have the matching pink blooms sandals, like the slides. So I like to match my shoes to my bag. And those are my Gucci bags and my one Prada bag. All right, so these are my three YSL bags. I don't have a lot. This is the YSL Lou camera bag in a burgundy color. And I used to actually also own this in a beige, but I found that once I got my LV Pochette Matisse, I wasn't really using the beige one. So I have since removed it from my collection, but I will probably keep this for a while because it adds a nice little pop of color to my bag collection, even though it's a bit of a subdued red. You know, it's a burgundy, but I think it's called red on the, the color code. I really like the tarnished yellow gold hardware against the burgundy. The zipper is really pretty and easy to open. I wish the Lou camera bag and all other bags have a back pocket for my phone, but that's okay. That is not the style of it. I still use it and love it. I've done a video showing what fits inside the Lou camera bag. And then I did another video showing how to remove the tassel that comes with it. And I just popped it onto this 
o-ring so it can move freely or you can clip it on here or on the zipper too i've done that before next up is the ysl collage bag and i don't know what size this is it's small i guess in the black chevron with the silver ruthenium hardware it's another kind of antique looking silver like a tarnished silver now i love the style i just i love that it's almost like biker chic but the inside just does not fit a lot i just find myself reaching for other bags you know the pochette matisse is a similar layout but just has more space so i haven't really been using this unless i really want that going out like evening look but it's hard for me to even use this as kind of a daytime bag the chain strap i keep in here it's very heavy i do like that this has a back pocket for my phone so that makes it a lot easier to use and this i actually got also from the ysl outlet in woodbury commons i got it at the same trip where i got my gucci bloomy bags it was a very fruitful trip for me and then this is my ysl reeve gauche tote I waited a while to get this until there was a great promo at Neiman Marcus or Saks or something where I think I got this for something like 15 or 20% off the retail price. So I finally, when they had a sale running last time, I finally picked it up and I really like it. I use this as a beach bag. I have a Samorga organizer in here and I have it in white because I cannot stand when a tote bag is just a black hole of a bag and I can't see anything. So Samorga makes an organizer specifically for the Reeve Gauche tote. It has a water bottle pocket here and other pockets lining the sides. And then the bag itself has this pocket here that is kind of a flap pocket. So I still have my receipt on here. So I paid $862 for this bag and it has since gone up a couple hundred dollars. So I think I'll hold on to this. I actually was considering getting this in another color. This comes out in a few different colors every season, I think. I really like the cream colored one, but then I just, got other tote bags and so I don't really need it in another color. I'm okay with what I have here that is the back. Now I did get this in black but this is a lint trap you guys. I think I even sprayed it with Scotch Guard, which is supposed to prevent stains but also I thought it was supposed to help with lint but this has just been sitting on my shelf and it's covered in <laughs> in white lint but that's okay. I like that the top part snaps a little bit here so when you snap it it's a lot easier to carry over your shoulder. It has just the two rolled handles here. And so if you have a coat or something, you probably wouldn't be able to put it over your shoulders. But in the summer, which is when I would use this, it's pretty easy to carry. And it's very light also. All right, these are my Fendi bags and I'll start off with this one. So this one has a bit of a sad story. Uh, this is the Fendi Chef Zuka tote in, I guess, a limited edition roses design. I actually had this originally in the, just the normal Zuka print, and I thought it was so easy to use and just really comfortable and carefree. It packs flat, so it's great for travel because then you can pack it flat in your luggage and then just bring it out when you are running around. It's pretty small, but it deceptively holds a lot more than you would think. And I like that the interior is a lighter color, so it's not like a, an abyss inside. And then I just throw my phone in the zip pocket here. Now my little sad story with this is I originally had this in the original Zuka print and it was stolen. It was stolen when my car was stolen. It was such a bummer. I had to go through and file a claim under my homeowner's insurance. So I was reimbursed for it, but it was so sad. I had a lot of sentimental value attached to the original one because I wore it so many times, but I was able to get this replacement. I think I found this on eBay or from a vintage reseller and I like the roses, so I don't mind it as much. Now this is the very first Fendi bag I ever purchased. I got this from the Fendi in the Caesars forum in Vegas when I was on vacation there years and years ago. Now in hindsight, I kind of wish I got the original, you know, Zuka print. I think because I already had another Fendi Zuka in the brown Zuka, I was like, okay, I need a black bag. So I got this and you guys are gonna die because I have the original receipt in here. So this has silver hardware. It's in pretty good condition considering this is very old. I recently got a Samorga organizer and it's really helped with keeping the shape, but I have the original dust bag in here and I have the original receipt, you guys. You are going to cry. I even have the business card for the sales associate who helped me. So here is the receipt from years and years ago. And I'm pretty sure the location doesn't even exist anymore, but this was purchased at the Caesars Las Vegas, the Caesars Las Vegas boutique Christmas Eve 2007. We were in Vegas for Christmas Eve for a total of, look at the original retail. 
$590. I mean, can you believe it? Can you imagine? I should have gotten two. I would cry if I see the receipts for Chanel, like my Chanel bags from back in the day. Yeah, so 2007, so it's been, oh my gosh, 15 years. This bag was purchased 15 years ago, brand new from the boutique. It is in excellent condition still, even though I use it quite a lot. I love this style bag and I'm actually considering getting it in the original Zuka. And I liked it so much that I got it in denim. So this is the Fendi Mama bag in the denim with this really cool bluish lizard detailing on the flap and then on the shoulder strap. You can see it's like a greenish blue lizard. I think it's lizard, snakeskin, I don't know. And then it's a denim and it has the yellow gold stitching. I also have a yellow Samorga organizer inside to keep its shape because this bag was super slouchy when I first got it. I got this from also a vintage reseller. I did an entire vintage bags haul. So check that video out if you're looking for my recommended resellers, but that is where I got this bag. Next up is the Fendi Mia flap in the Zuka logo. And I really like this because it is like the baguette, but it has more space to it. You can see the side there. It's kind of similar to the mama bag style because it's wider, but it, I don't know, has maybe a smaller profile. It's a little slouchier. You can see it has little pleats right here. And then the strap is cool because it has this braided leather and gold chain. This was also part of that huge vintage bags haul, I think. Very spacious inside. Has It still has the plastic on the tag. And, oh, and then it still, it still has this. So yeah, I just keep all that in there. I definitely recommend this style if you like the Fendi Zuka print, but you wanted maybe a little bit of a bigger bag than the current baguette that they're offering. So if you find this in the vintage market, you should snap it up. Sometimes I add a crossbody strap to the D-rings here, and then I wear it as a crossbody bag with the shoulder strap kind of flipped around to the front. And lastly, I have the Fendi Spy Bag. This was such a Y2K icon. I really wanted to get it in the Zuka print, and then it has this really soft tobacco leather detailing, and then the, is it tortoise shell handles? Uh, this was just the coolest, coolest bag. I coveted this when it came out and I couldn't afford it because I was either in high school or college and just struggling to afford anything. But this is so cool. So I was able to find it from a reseller and it is in great condition. It has these cool secret pockets. That's why it's called the Fendi Spy Bag. You can keep your, I don't know, love letters in there or something. This also opens up here so you can keep something in there. And then inside, you have this generous opening. I think I got this from Fashion File. Yeah. And then I keep this air paper in here to keep the shape. And then I got this charcoal bag. These charcoal bags are supposed to kind of absorb the scent. If you have a bag that's vintage or just generally is musty and you know has some kind of smell that you want to get rid of, you just stick these in here. I got these from Amazon. I'll link it below. It's by house edition? I don't really know. So I just keep this in there and there you go. So once again, I love when the lining of a bag is a lighter color so you can see what's inside. If I'm being honest, I'm, I don't use this a lot <laughs> because it's not the most easy to carry or the most practical, but it just is such a cool, cool style. I love this. This is available in solid colors. You know, they, they produce this for a few years in different materials. I saw it in denim. I saw it in some embroidered something, but I just wanted the iconic Fendi logo. There it is in the back also. And it just is in such great condition. All right, here we have the first half of my Dior collection. These are the older and vintage bags. So we'll start with these two right here. These are part of the Dior Girly collection. And this was actually the very first Dior bag that I ever got. This is the Dior Girly Boston bag. This is actually not the exact bag that I purchased. So this was the first Dior bag I got back in the early 2000s. This was part of the pinnacle of Y2K fashion. And I just absolutely loved the entire Girly collection. I love the pink. I was really into pink when I was that age. I don't even remember if I was in high school or college. I think I was actually still in high school when this collection came out, but I just loved the crystal lock right here and it has the crystal logo. I did a video called bags that I regret selling because even though I purchased this exact style and I use it so much, 
it started showing a lot of wear on the corners and I ended up selling it because I didn't want it to get dirty. You know, I knew that it just kind of, I don't know, wouldn't stand the test of time <laughs> and in terms of durability, I guess. So I sold it while it was still in decent condition to actually my LV coworker. And then recently in my vintage bags haul, I decided I wanted to repurchase this and add it to my collection again. So I found it in decent condition on Fashion File. I think it was Fashion File, maybe it was Rebag. And so I repurchased it and you can see it's, it, you know, it's not in perfect condition. It has a few stains, most noticeably on the back here. I can try to remove that, but I figured I wouldn't really see it. It still has all the crystals right here, right there, and the new padlock. So I just really like it. Definitely not an everyday bag, but when I'm just feeling very feminine and, and girly, I will probably bring this out again. So in addition to the Dior Girly Boston bag, I also got this Dior Girly Messenger bag, and this is probably a little more practical, a little, little sportier than the Boston bag. It has this nylon strap right here. It has the same crystal logo, crystal number one, the pearls and the white flowers. And this was also in really good condition. So here's the inside. Yeah, so this I got from Rebag. Here's the interior. It has a zip pocket, but just great for my essentials. And I just realized I didn't show you the inside of the Boston bag. So here it is. The zipper has that same patent leather pull tab that you can use to lock right here, but I would never lock it. So here's the inside. This has the original Dior dust bag and all the tags are still here from Fashion File. Same zip pocket and then pink interior. This is my one and only Dior saddle bag. This is a vintage Dior saddle in the, the burgundy oblique canvas with gold hardware. And then I have this tortoise shell Samorga crossbody chain added to it just to make it a little more wearable in addition to the burgundy leather strap, shoulder strap. When the saddle was you know, reintroduced to the current collection, the prices of the vintage ones really skyrocketed. So I was trying to find one that was in good condition and I really wanted it in the oblique color and I decided not to do the navy oblique because I have a few bags already in the navy and I really wanted to make my collection a little more versatile so I just added this one and I got this from Fashion File because as you can see here I still have not worn it because the inside was a little like it just was a little musty so I keep this bamboo air purifying bag in here to suck up all the odor and it actually smells great now so I think I can start to bust this out and use it. It has the satin lining with the one zip pocket and there it is. So I can probably cut this off now, but I like to keep these on here just until I wear it. But I mean, I definitely was keeping it. So I don't really have plans to add another saddle to my collection. I mean, unless I really, really like one. I kind of liked the gradient blue ombre that came out last year, but this honestly, it's not my favorite design. So I like this style, but I probably won't add another saddle to my collection. Okay, this is another vintage oldie. This one I believe was when John Galliano was the creative director. It has that very signature oversized Dior buckle. It's a denim, I guess, hobo, but like a mini, obviously. It's very tiny, but it just is so cute. Very kind of an impractical design in terms of holding things. It really doesn't hold much. I just have tissue paper and kind of storing it. But then inside is really pretty. It has the Dior oblique satin lining and then the Dior label right there. It has a one zip pocket and still has the original cars and everything in here from when I got this. This I also got from a reseller. I just really like this dark denim color. I think denim is probably my favorite material for bags after their signature kind of fabric logo. I don't know. I just I just really like denim. I think I have a denim bag from every collection, every designer, I think at this point. I don't know what this is called. <laughs> Half moon bag. And then these two are probably my oldest bags. This right here is probably my oldest Dior bag in my collection. It is a vintage Dior clutch with a magnetic opening. And I believe this is from the 70s. It has that really interesting Dior logo that you might recognize from older bags. The Dior logo has changed a lot over the years and this is 
an old one. So it is in the navy oblique. And you can see how over time the color really does change. It just yellows over time. So I guess maybe this is older. I don't even know, to be honest. This might be older or maybe just as dirty. But when you compare these older navy oblique bags to the current navy oblique, you can see how lighter the kind of gray background is on the newer ones. But this is an interesting style clutch. It has a magnetic opening that kind of folds like that. It has this hinge on both sides. And this I obviously got from a fashion file. I still have the tags in here. And then I added this chain, I believe this was from Dress Up Your Purse, to flip around the hinge and wear as a shoulder bag. So I even have the D-rings, but I'll just show you the inside. This is a really good quality clutch. It has a leather lining and it just fits your essentials for a night out. You can see the Dior logo inside is really wearing away. And then I have my vintage Dior Boston bag in the navy oblique. They have redesigned this a couple times over the years and I don't think they make it anymore, but I really like this vintage style, very similar to the LV Speedy. It has the zipper right here and it opens up like this. Inside it has a leather lining and this I also got from Fashion File. So there is the leather navy interior and my fashion file tags are still in there. Okay, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a tag right there. I really have to crumple the bag up so you can see the tag. But that tag right there, it says Christian Dior baggages. It's hard to see, but these are the really old tags from back in the day. And then it has, similar to the LV Speedy, it just has the one zip pocket right here. Now, this is the bag without any stuffing in it. It really could use a, an organizer inside to keep the shape, but when I'm not using it, I just restuff it. Yeah, it's a very, very classic silhouette. All right, and these are my newer Dior bags. And now that I have them all next to each other, I see that there is a recurring theme in that they are all blue. So let's just start with one of my most used bags is this. And I don't even know the name of it. This was from the men's collection. I got this last year. I just really wanted, again, a hands-free crossbody bag. And I loved this design. If you look up close, it's the same or kind of like a modern interpretation of the Dior Oblique, but in this like a pixelated version. And the color I just thought was so pretty. This is a much brighter cobalt blue than the typical navy. And I just thought it was so cool. It has silver hardware, which I would prefer gold, but most of the men's I found is has silver hardware. I just love the shape. I love the style. I like the size. The inside has just a fabric lining. This is Dior made in Italy. And it just has enough space for what I need. And here has another zip pocket on the outside and then a very wide strap here um, that is adjustable and so yeah i don't know i think it's called technical crossbody or men's technical messenger pouch or something like that i just thought this is so practical i really like a lot of men's styles i just find them to be a lot more practical for my purposes so if you're looking for something and you don't see it from the women's collection, I always recommend checking out what the men's collection has to offer because I found that a lot of their designs just make more sense for what I need. So this is one of my most used bags. Okay, and this technically isn't a bag. It's part of their small leather goods collections. This is the Dior Oblique phone holder crossbody in the navy oblique. And I just love this. I love the style. I love how thin and lightweight it is. It has these gussets on the side so your phone doesn't fall out. It has a top handle in leather that is removable and this really thin chain that you wear as a crossbody. It also has card holders. Look, I even still have my chapstick <laughs> in the bottom. I always keep it there because I use this when I'm mostly just in the house and I'm running up and down and running around doing errands. I was recently using it just when I was cleaning the house and I was listening to my phone, a podcast on my phone, and I wanted to have my phone on me, but I wasn't wearing pockets. It just makes it so easy to just always have your phone on you all the time. So I definitely have gotten a lot of use out of this. I think this is called the 30 Montane phone holder. It comes in different designs, but I just really like the oblique and it's got the little CD logo at the top. Okay, another little small other good. This is the Dior travel kit. 
It has a slip pocket here and it opens up like here and it has this sleep mask and a luggage tag. They changed this around because it also came with either a zip pouch, like a card zip, or it had a passport holder. And it's probably with my wallets right now, but that was what was included here. So they kind of reissue this in different variations with different things that it includes inside. But I always bring this with me when I travel. And then in here, this is where I keep my other small, like textiles, scarves, twillies, hair scrunchies. I keep this in here just to keep it protected from everything else and keep my travel stuff nice, nice and organized. And inside it has the logo. I like the light interior. I actually got this one. I was planning a trip to the Philippines and it was right when COVID started. So unfortunately I have not been able to bring this on any international travels yet, but I hope to use it this year. We plan to travel out of the country finally. So hopefully this will see some action. Okay, and this is probably my most recent Dior bag purchase. This is the Dior vanity case in the Palms collection from last summer. I actually was able to get this on sale for about 40% off. I did a video about it showing what else was on sale. It was just such a great price because I think that the prices of the vanity case are so pricey considering they are just holding your makeup and toiletries and well, you can wear it as a bag if you attach a strap, but it's not meant to be worn as a bag. So I just thought it was very overpriced as a cosmetic kit, but at the 40% off, it was a great deal. So I'll show you inside. This actually holds all my fancy compacts and pressed powders in here. And I have this Samorga organizer to keep it nice and organized. It has a zip pocket right here at the top. So I did bring this kind of on a road trip, but I haven't traveled, like travel, travel, travel in a plane, but I plan to travel a lot this summer. So I will be using this a lot and I really like it. I might use it as a bag also. You can always attach a strap to the top and then wear it as a little shoulder bag. Next up is my 30 Montaigne in the navy oblique. And I got this in the leather shoulder strap version. They have another version that has a chain strap. But what's great about the leather shoulder strap is you can actually wear this as a belt. You might have to punch some new holes in there. And to be honest, I haven't tried it as a belt, but I definitely would repurpose it as a belt soon. It has the oversized hardware. I love this style because it has also this back pocket, which is so crucial for slipping your phone in and out. And yeah, I love the oversized buckle in the front. Opens up this way. And then inside, it has just enough space for everything you need. Now, what I love most about this is that you can wear it as a shoulder bag if you double up these straps, or you can lengthen the straps, slide it through the hardware, and wear it as a crossbody which is how I would prefer it. Now this bag I might actually consider getting in another color or a solid leather. I just think this design makes so much sense and it just is probably the most practical of all my Dior bags. And finally, I have my two Dior book totes. This is the original large book tote in the navy oblique and then the old small or the new medium, because they recently came out with a new small, which is even smaller than this. So now technically what was once considered the small book tote, this is now considered the new medium <laughs> size. You guys, if I am being totally honest, I, as much as I love the book tote, I love the silhouette. I love the different designs. I love the Navy Trois de Jouy. This is my favorite design. I just, I love how detailed everything is, all those little animals. It just isn't the most practical in either size. So the larger size would be obviously the best size for travel, but it just doesn't feel comfortable to wear over your shoulders for me. I mean, I can wear it over my shoulders, but it just isn't practical for me. You know, when I'm traveling and I have my kids, I need my hands free. So I just can't be dealing with this, I guess. I do have a Samorga organizer in here. And so the medium size is a great size for just everyday errands and stuff. And it just looks so pretty. I have the matching Trois de Jouy Mitza here on the handle. I, I mean, I love looking at it. I don't have plans to get rid of either of these. I haven't tried the newer size yet. I plan to go into the boutique and try on the newer size, but I'm okay with what I have. I'm okay with the larger book tote and the medium size as like a cute everyday bag. This one, I just wish it were a little more functional for me to use it as a travel bag 
If I'm traveling alone or if it's just me and my husband, then this might be okay as a travel bag. But yeah, it just isn't practical. <laughs> it just really isn't the most practical bag. But I do use this on road trips. So for me, this is a great road trip bag. This is a great everyday bag. Yeah, if you just need literally a tote bag, but you don't need to kind of go in and out, then this would be great. I definitely don't recommend it as a baby bag. I think that some new moms think this is a great bag. You know, I have three kids. This is not a practical baby bag for me. I need my baby bag to have legit shoulder straps and this just, it's a little too awkward to wear as a shoulder bag, but I still really like it. I still use it. This, I just love the design. I love the style. Good news, everyone. I found the organizer for my Dior book tote. I had it inside one of my LV on the go tote bags. And that's what's great about these organizers is even though they are specifically designed for a particular bag, you can reuse them and use them in other similar sized tote bags. So I just was trying it out in my on the go <laughs> bag. But yeah, you can see it fits here perfectly, which I love. It also has a removable Velcro top here. So if you still want that open top, you can just remove this right here. But I like there to be a top, so. Okay, moving on to Chanel. So this is my vintage Chanel collection. I have all three sizes, I believe, of the flap. Starting here, I have the vintage square mini in the lambskin black leather with gold hardware. And I don't know if you guys have felt a vintage Chanel bag, but they are so soft. For practical purposes, I would prefer caviar, but I really like the feel of the lambskin leather. So here it is at the top. The chain strap pulls out. Here's the back pocket that fits essentially nothing. And then inside it has the classic burgundy interior, a slip pocket, and then a zip pocket. I love the vintage hardware also. So the interior pocket has a burgundy satin lining, and then the interior of the bag itself is that burgundy leather, which is also very soft. Now, fortunately, this does fit my 12 Pro Max. So it is still a great fit. And then the back here, I literally just keep, you know, parking stubs <laughs> and just, I don't know, papers, receipts in here. I don't really care, keep much in there, but that is the vintage square mini flap. I had to adjust the lighting because it was a little too blinding. So this is more of an accurate color of the black and same with the square mini, not as reflective. You can see it's a really nice rich black. So this is another classic flap in the small size, also in the black lambskin with gold hardware. This is due for some cleaning. I really need to get a leather cleaner. I got like toothpaste. <laughs> so yeah, I really need to clean that, but it is also very soft and smooth. The quilting on these plastic flaps are not puffy, which I kind of like the puffy look, but these just look so nice and luxurious. Here is the back pocket. This is a little wider, but again, I try not to put a lot of stuff in here. And I think the chain was resting along the back, so you can see it has indentations there. And this is a double flap, so it has this flap right here. It opens up. You have that really pretty logo and the burgundy interior. And this has the two pockets, and this is a lipstick pocket. And then another pocket in the front here. Okay, now this pocket here in the front is a little strange because you would think that it's similar to the wallet on chain pocket where it's the entire lining of the bag back here, but this is not the case. This is stitched closed right here and the pocket is this portion of the flap. I don't know what you would keep in there. It's very narrow and you can see right there. I mean, that's really the space. That's it, that's the lining, that's where it ends. So secret pocket for lip pencils in here. I've never used this pocket. And then behind the double flap is another secret compartment little pocket here. And I actually still have my authenticity card <laughs> in here. So that is the vintage classic flap in small. And then here is my third and my largest classic flap. I believe this is the jumbo size. I like that the quilting is a little puffier. It's the same black smooth lambskin with a gold hardware, but what is cool about this bag is it is a double-sided flap bag. So there are two flaps, <laughs> one on each side, 
and it just was the coolest thing. I got this from a Japanese reseller that had really gorgeous vintage Chanel bags and I had never seen this style. I just thought it was the coolest thing. So I'll show you both sides because they're a little different. So here is the first side. So on this one side, you have the black leather interior and then you have a slip pocket right here. The Chanel logo printed in gold. And then on the other side, open this up. And this is the side with the zip pocket. So you have the same Chanel logo in gold printed, and then you have the zip pocket with that same really pretty vintage hardware. In the zip pocket, I still even have the original vintage Chanel book. Let's take a look at this. And it's got the authenticity card. So I am going to miss that the new bags are gonna have that same RFID chip. It's kind of a bummer because I really like having the authenticity card. When I shop for vintage Chanel bags, I always look for a full complete set, preferably with the original dust bag and box and always with the authenticity card. Okay, and then that's the rest of the interior. So this has the black leather interior and the one side has a zip pocket and then the other side has the slip pocket on the inside but i mean how cool is this of my three chanel flat bags i probably wear this the most because it is the biggest and i just tend to carry a lot of things but what is a little probably a little annoying about this is because it has the clasp <laughs> and the flap on both sides this digs into my side you know whichever side mine are a little con of the bag but i just really love this also it's kind of getting a little bit discolored at the top i really don't baby my vintage bags i probably should but i keep this on display this is usually on display in the back of all my videos i have it up on my shelf so yeah i just like to have it out so i can see it okay this is my one and only chanel wallet on chain and this is the half moon wallet on chain in the gunmetal caviar i think <laughs> i forget what the finish is it's this pebbled looking leather but i just really like this so much better than the classic wallet on chain because the shape it just lends itself to holding a lot more inside so i'll open this up there's the stamping a little slip pocket here and here's the dust bag. Same matching chain with that same pebbly leather caviar detailing. The metal is like a darker gun metal. And then it's got some card slots right there. So yeah, this style really isn't for everyone. It's very 80s, 90s aesthetic, I think, with the oversized logo here and then just the pleating. I don't know. It's not for everyone, but I really like it. I don't know if it's considered vintage now. It's probably 20 years old, I think. <laughs> but this one I did purchase brand new from a Chanel boutique. Okay, this is another vintage find. This is a denim Chanel bar flap. I think it's called like a chocolate bar flap. There's a whole collection of this quilting that looks like chocolate bar squares. If when you look it up online, it's either called bar flap or chocolate bar. And I just love the vintage denim distressed look it's almost like got a greenish hinge to the color because it's got that really distressed denim look where it's almost like sun bleached and the color is kind of faded but i just think it's so cool i love this look i kind of would have preferred if it were a gold hardware but that's okay so it is a very very dark leather trim and then kind of like aged stitching but we'll open this up here so that same dark espresso leather lining. The Chanel is imprinted and then it's a kind of a fabric material inside. And then the same setup as the classic flap. It's got the two slip pockets and then the lipstick pocket in the middle. And it is on a shoulder strap. So this one again, I also got from a vintage, probably a Japanese reseller. Okay, and this is probably my most nostalgic Chanel bag because this was my very first Chanel purchase. I purchased this when I was an LV employee and at one point I was working at a department store that also had a Chanel boutique and they very graciously allowed LV employees to use the Chanel employee discount. There was a Chanel employee sale for seasonal merchandise and so this was part of the sale and I was so excited because I had been eyeing this for years and we were able to purchase it for 40% off. This was on sale. It was either 40 or 60, something just crazy. And so I was so excited because I had never purchased a Chanel bag before. And this was my very first purchase. This is the, I think it's called the Line Cambone Tote or Rue Cambone Tote. Someone correct me. You guys remember this collection. It came in other colors, 
different colorways. This also came in a baby pink. There was also beige and then the lettering was either pink or beige or black, depending on which color you got. But I got the smaller tote and it has a really pretty pink, either, it's either satin or nylon lining. And here's the dust bag. And what's cool about this is it actually has a zip closure at the top. So you can close it up, protect what's inside. This kind of tucks inside here. Then it's semi-closed. I just thought this was the cutest bag. It even has two pen pockets right here. And then this is a zipped pocket. And do I have stuff in here? Oh, I still have, <laughs> see, I like to keep all the cards and stuff in there. So I have my original authenticity card. I have the original care booklet. Oh my gosh, they, this is like such a vintage find. Oh my gosh, you can see that this is so old. The zipper pull is like rusting and it feels really kind of raw and dirty, like grungy. Yeah, it's definitely rusting. I can, I don't know if you can see it in here, but this is turning colors. And then there's another zip pocket on this side too. And let's see this pocket again, a useless back pocket. You guys, you know what I just noticed? So this bag has this kind of leather strap that wraps around the side. And this is a pocket. <laughs> it's a very narrow pocket, but look what's in here. It's the original price tag. So it has the Neiman Marcus price tag. Guys, this bag retail was $1,275. Can you believe it? Oh my gosh. And so that price, back then was just, I mean, astronomical. And so with the 40 off, I remember this came out to about 600, which I thought was so much. So I paid $600 for this with the employee discount. But yeah, oh my gosh, how funny. The original price tag from 10, 15 years ago, I don't even know. Okay, and then my final vintage Chanel bag is the original Chanel Surf Tote. They have redesigned this and it's a lot more structured, but as you can see here, I have used this bag to death it literally has just collapsed in on itself. I use this so much. I mean, I abuse this bag. I used to wear this to work. I would carry my laptop. I would carry files in here. I was working, you know, at a courthouse. And so I just had tons of legal files I was carrying and it has just, this is destroyed. <laughs> it's pretty much destroyed, but I love this bag so much. I just thought it was the most practical tote bag for work. It has this big wide pocket out here. This is where I would keep some files. It has a turn lock here. So when you turn it, it opens up over here. So you have another wide pocket. I still have bobby pins and stuff in here. And then this is a magnetic closure right here. And then it has this pocket here to separate the main compartment. So this compartment zips open. I have the shoulder strap in here. The shoulder straps, by the way, attach to the rolled handles. There's a little hook hidden underneath the base of one of each side of the handle. So not on that side, but just on the one side. So that's where the shoulder strap. So this is where all the weight was being carried. And you can see here, it's like pulling the leather up. Oh my gosh, I use this bag so much. So it has a zip pocket here. There's the zipper pull. It's got the CC logo on one side, and then it has Chanel written out on the other side. And that's how they are on all these zipper pulls. This little pouch here attaches on both sides with snaps. And, you know, I actually never really use this. So I would just go ahead and remove this pouch and then just kind of keep it at home because I just always wanted a large tote bag and just, I would throw all my stuff in here. It is so gross. I really need to clean this. There's crumbs in here, bobby pins, just lint. Oh my gosh, I use this bag so much. Here is another zip pocket on this side. And, oh, here you go. So I also have the authenticity card here. Here is the original tag. So it's from the 08A. Yeah, so the Chanel Surf Tote. I was considering getting the newer style of this and I eventually decided not to, but I mean, oh my gosh, this leather. The leather is really nice. I really need to get an organizer or something to maintain the shape. This lives on the, my shelf also on a purse stand because it really just needs to be held up. It's just, this bag has died, but it has served its purpose for many years as my workhorse tote bag. And these are all my newest Chanel bags. These are the ones that I got in the past few years or so. And we will just start from left to right <laughs> so they don't fall. This is my Coco handle in the iridescent blue. I love this hardware, oh, so pretty. So it's a silver hardware, but the turn lock has the kind of rainbow 
ombre right there and then it has a silver chain with the same iridescent blue leather I, my nails are always an iridescent finish and right now these match my newer bag but i usually have this kind of an icier finish too sometimes but look how pretty now this one i haven't used a lot and i'm sorry but i am one of those who always keeps the stickers on the hardware as long as possible and i know that some people argue that you should remove it right away because it's damaging to the hardware i think it's fine so i just i prefer to keep it on as long as possible usually until it's just actually falling off here's the back pocket and i don't keep anything in here it's very narrow this is the small size and then, and then here is the chain shoulder strap and this is removable i usually keep it on but i was trying this on the other day so here it is open up i have a samorga organizer in here it comes with two little divider pockets because there's a larger divider in the middle and I just love this color. So I still have the sticker on this hardware. It's so hard to capture the color of these iridescent finish bags, but I just, I love this. So this was from the 21 something collection. I got this at the end of 2021 towards Christmas time. And this I briefly showed last year. I think I got this in the summer. The price of the vanity case has gone up and I got this when it was around 2000, I believe in the Navy and I just love the hardware the hardware on this is it's like a champagne yellow gold so not a bright yellow gold it almost looks silver from far away and there is the inside so this is the true Chanel cosmetic vanity case that's part of the leather goods collection and I actually got this from the beauty boutique here in Atlanta if you purchase the vanity case shoulder bag like the one that's an actual shoulder bag I'm pretty sure the top part has a mirror or maybe the newer version has a mirror this one doesn't have a mirror at the top but it has this little gusseted pocket here and then another pocket here I think I need to get an organizer for this similar to my niece BB for LV I like to have the organizer to keep toiletries and help it prevent from getting the inside dirty and this is the first Chanel bag that I got this year because this is technically not a bag like it's not a shoulder bag this is part of the 22p collection I did a video about this but it's actually a travel set it is meant to be like a toiletry pouch set and then inside it has oh my god you know what I didn't even realize that this has a pocket <laughs> I just realized that inside it actually comes with a blindfold like a sleeping mask blindfold because this is meant for travel and because I use this as a crossbody bag, I have it in with the packaging, but I added a shoulder strap to the loops on the bottom and the top. This strap is from Dress Up Your Purse and I wear it as a crossbody bag and I just absolutely love it. It's very similar to my Dior phone holder. This leather handle is great for removing the bag after you wear it so it doesn't get tangled up in your hair. Yeah, I really like this. It's nylon, it's part of this new seasonal nylon travel collection but i got this specifically to wear as a crossbody bag kind of like a fanny pack belt bag i just love this as a belt bag and my newest newest bag that i added to my collection i did an unboxing video about this this is the chanel 19 in this gorgeous gorgeous iridescent pink beige color with yellow gold hardware in the front here and on the clasp I did a video unboxing this also because I was so excited about this color I had wanted a Chanel 19 for a long time and I considered a white one last year I was also considering a purple one and I'm just so glad I got this because I have the cocoa handle already in the iridescent blue and the purple and the white I thought were a little too similar or actually well I got this because I didn't get the white one anyway <laughs> but I got this and I just really love it I've been wearing this a lot already I wore this on date night it was valentine's day recently and so i wore this out and even just casual going out for lunch running errands during the day i just wear it i wear it all the time i don't wear it with dark denim on the back and so far it's been okay with color transfer i'm considering using is it scotch guard or apple guard on this because i really don't want there to be color transfer and i really want to protect the iridescent finish so if you guys have a metallic iridescent Chanel bag let me know what you have used to prevent color transfer oh, I just really like this I really like the back pocket right here I throw my phone in there I like the mixed metal hardware 
So check out my video because I tried it on and everything. I have surprisingly been wearing this just over my arm holding it as a top handle bag. Usually I wear it cross bodies, but I just thought it was really cute as a, as a top handle bag. I don't have an organizer in here, although I'm considering getting one from Samorga very soon. So you guys, this is the Chanel Sunset on the Sea bag in blue. How pretty is this? This was a seasonal bag. I talked about how I just love this bag and I was on a hunt for it, even from a reseller, because I thought I missed out on this collection from the store, but luckily they were able to find it from the boutique and I got the absolute very last one and it was way past when this came out. This was part of the cruise collection from a couple years ago and I got this the winter like of the following year or something like that. <laughs> but I just love it. I, look at that. How cool. It's got this kind of like the 19. It has this top chain with the blue ombre acrylic and then the leather has that just like beautiful ombre gradient color. Same thing on the back here but opposite. So yeah so it starts off lighter and then it gets darker darker and then lighter again and then it just is such a nice contrast oh it's so pretty and then it has this longer shoulder strap in this fabric material unfortunately this is pilling a little bit i really need to like get a razor and scrape off these little pillies but i wore this with i think a white kind of a faux fur coat last year and it just has gotten a ton of pills on it but that's okay because this is the side that i wear it and so you can't really see see so when you flip it over you can see that's the side that I was wearing on my clothes. This is okay. I love this. I love the yellow gold against the blue. So I think this did come in two sizes. This is the smaller size, but it just fits everything I need. It can fit my phone and my keys. And that's the inside. It has the zipper pocket right here. I love this Chanel Sunset on the Sea. I'm so glad I was able to find this from the boutique because I just hate getting anything from a reseller. If I can avoid it, I try not to. So there's the Chanel Sunset on the Sea in blue. I wanted to quickly show you these two honorable mentions. This is the netting bag from the Chanel Factory 5 collection that came out last summer in honor of the 150th anniversary of Chanel Number no. 5. It was a free gift with purchase if you purchased a certain amount online or if you purchased from the collection in a Chanel Beauty Boutique you were gifted this really interesting netting bag. There it is. It says number five, Paris. And I think this is made in China. I don't know if there's a made in tag, but it's this just really interesting netting mesh bag. Like if you go to a fish market <laughs> or a reusable grocery store tote, super cute. I don't know, some people say it looks like a jockstrap shape. <laughs> I haven't used this to be honest. I just leave this hanging on my door because I just think it's such a fun little novelty bag. But yeah, this is technically a bag and this was a free gift purchase from the number no. five factory five collection and another bag that's not quite a bag. This is the Chanel cosmetic pouch that was part of their holiday sets from last holiday and then the holiday prior. This went viral because I think I started the trend. <laughs> But I added this chain strap on both sides to this loop right here. And I also added this tassel. This set, this accessory set was a collab with Dress Up Your Purse Store. And I just love being able to transform this into a crossbody camera purse. But this was a free cosmetic pouch that was part of a cosmetic set that they... So I've done a ton of videos about this. Chanel put out a bunch of these holiday sets in black and also in red and there were different variations. There was also a gold one two years ago, but they didn't bring the gold one out last Christmas, but I don't care. I love this. I wear it so much. I have bought a ton of these. I gifted a bunch of them. I love these things. Yeah, so I think this year was actually less expensive than last year's. The least expensive set was something like $66, which I mean, what a steal for a <laughs> Chanel bag. And moving on to my Chanel Deville totes. This is the small Chanel Deville in beige. I think it's a raffia material canvas with the caramel kind of detailing canvas around the edge and then the leather. I love this. I love this guys. I actually used Scotchgard to protect all the canvas. I use this a lot in the summer and I haven't seen any wear and tear. I haven't seen any color transfer on this. Yeah, I got this this summer right before I moved. But yeah, I've used this already for a couple summers by now and it is still in great condition. 
The inside, I have a Samorga organizer. I forget what the color is, but this keeps it nice and organized. I love the water bottle pockets on both sides. The zipper closure protects all your stuff inside, or you can remove it. It has Velcro along the sides if you want to remove it. There is one zip pocket here and two slip pockets here. This is just such a great errand bag, especially in the summer. It's so lightweight. It fits a ton. I really like it. I wish it had top handles, but in the small size, it doesn't unfortunately have top handles, but this is such a great summer bag. And then last but not least, this is probably my most used Chanel bag and probably my most used tote bag. <laughs> this is the large Chanel Deauville in the blue denim color. I don't know if it's the large or medium. It might be medium. Their sizing is so crazy and their descriptions online don't make any sense, but consider this a large Chanel Deauville. And I just love this color. I love blue. I use this all the time. It's a great carry-on bag on the plane. It has nice top handles here. It has shoulder straps that are very comfortable. I did a video talking about bags that I have sold and I actually owned the Deville years and years ago before they redesigned it and added these leather parts of the shoulder strap to make it a lot more comfortable to wear. I sold it because it was a lot bigger and it was just so uncomfortable. It just was too heavy. And to be honest, I like this better. I like that it's the darker tone on tone Chanel. So it's not so like in your face. The one that I had was similar dark navy denim, but the logo lettering was white and I just really like this better. Okay, inside, here's my trick. <laughs> I have these two Chanel shopping bags that I folded flat and I keep this on the side here to maintain the shape because even with the Samorga organizer, you can kind of see this indent happening on the side here and I didn't want that line to happen. So I have this shopping bag to keep the bag kind of standing upright. So here it is opened up. And again, I have a Smorgo organizer in here. It zips along. You can see I still have travel stuff in here. I always have a ton of napkins in one pocket. I have a pen here inside. Okay, I just need to clean it. Yeah, it's just, there's dust and dirt. I have brought this on almost all my trips last summer. I just love this bag so much. There is one zip pocket along here. And then on the other side, there is two slip pockets. And then if you remove this, this size actually does have like a water bottle pocket along the one side. And then on the other side, you have the key leash with a hook. But honestly, because I have this organizer, I just tuck everything. Like I tuck this inside. I don't, I don't really use the key leash because Everything I need is just right here. And then I just zip it closed and then I use these snaps to close it up so that it's nice and safe when I'm traveling. That is the Large Deville Tote. Definitely my most used Chanel bag and probably my most used tote and travel bag. But speaking of travel bags, I almost forgot this bag, the Hermes Grooming Tote Bag. This is my one and only Hermes bag, unless you count my Hermes uh, swimsuit pouches, <laughs> zip pouches that swimsuits come in, which I don't count that. Even I don't count that. And I love converting pouches to bags, but this is my one and only Hermes bag. I love this. That is the back. It is this really durable, heavy duty navy canvas with the brown, I guess it's like a nylon webbing material for the straps and the shoulder straps. I just love this bag. When I saw this, I was like, oh my gosh, that is a perfect diaper mom bag and travel bag because it has all these pockets that are meant to hold horse grooming stuff, but I just use it for everything I need to carry when I'm traveling. It has this really pretty orange lining and this separate pouch that can tighten and also, and it's also removable. So you can, you know, I guess wash it if this gets dirty, but the pouch has a zip pocket right here, then a water bottle pocket on the side. But the bag itself has tons of pockets all along the side, along both sides, along the back and the front. I just absolutely love this bag. It also has snaps on both sides if you want to make the opening a little smaller, but I just never wear it that way. I think I showed it in my unboxing video. So check that out, I do a full review. But yeah, this is the Hermes grooming tote bag. So this is a great bag for travel also. It's got the top handles. It has this shoulder strap. Unfortunately for me, the shoulder strap is a little too long. It's not adjustable at all. And so 
what I actually do when I'm traveling is I tuck this entire bag and I did a carry on video about this also, but I, I tuck this entire Hermes tote bag inside a huge, like a weekend duffel bag that I just got from Target. It's just a solid black nylon, you know, nondescript bag to just protect it when I'm traveling. But that's just, you know, like when I'm flying on an airplane, but otherwise I would just bring this out. It's a great car road trip bag too. This is my one and only Hermes bag and it has completely taken the place of my Chanel DeVille tote. And now we have come to my largest collection and that is definitely LV. These are all of my non-monogram pieces because my LV monogram collection is definitely my largest. So these are all, you know, everything else. <laughs> Damier, Damier Azur, multicolor and all that. And again, I also have SLGs that unless I actually use as a bag, I won't be including in this video just because it's so long. But you know, the mini pochette accessories I use as bags. So anyway, but let's just get into it. First up is the mini HL in the white multicolor. I love this little baby bag. So I used to own the full size Speedy 30 in the white multicolor and I eventually sold it because the pocket on the front it had this big pocket with the yellow gold hardware. The canvas part of that pocket was starting to turn yellow and it just looked awful and I knew it would get worse over time. So I sold it while it was in decent condition, but I still have the mini SAC HL in the white multicolor. And this is just such a cute little baby bag. When I got this, I imagined that I might have a daughter at some point in the future. And I have three boys, so no daughter, but that is okay. I will definitely save this for maybe a granddaughter. But anyway, so here's the original lock and key. I still have that on here. It's starting to turn green at the top. So I actually can probably order a replacement lock, but I keep that up there. Here is the little pull tab and the opening. This has the red Alcantara material. It's kind of like a suede and some white multicolor bags were having that issue where the suede, the red color was bleeding through, especially at the seams. But mine fortunately is pretty decent looking, but there's an inside. It's hard to see, but it is just this same red inside. Very nice. Doesn't fit a lot, doesn't fit my phone, <laughs> but it's really just for decoration at this point. I have a pen mark right over here. So right now this is my only multicolor bag in my collection. And next up are my Damier Aben mini pochette accessories. I have the normal mini pochette accessory in the Damier Aben, and then I have the limited edition Christmas animation from a couple years ago. This is when Vivienne traveled the world. So this is Vivienne in Paris, and you can see there's the Eiffel Tower. There's the convertible with all the LV packages there. Super cute. I just kind of dressed it up. I have this little tassel from Dress Up Your Purse. And then the regular one, I also added a, a handle strap from Dress Up Your Purse. So yeah, these are really cute. The tab on the limited edition Christmas one is red, as you can see. And then when you open it up, the regular one is red and so is the animation. These mini pochette accessories are a great way to organize stuff within your purse. And then my only two Damier Azor pieces. I have the Damier Azor mini pochette accessory and then the full size pochette accessory. And let me tell you, this was so hard to find. I was looking for this for a while. I did a video on this on how to find hard to find LV items because the pochette accessory is always in demand, especially right before price increase. You guys, I remember when the pochette accessory, the monogram was like $250 or $275. I got this a couple years ago or three years ago and it was five something or maybe 410 or 510. And even then I was like, oh my gosh, it's so expensive now. It is insane how much the price has gone up for this. I think this retails now for a thousand dollars, which is so insane because this is not officially a bag. It's still considered a, an SLG. So anyway, I was able to find it. So the way I found this was I actually did an Instagram search. You know, I have my essays, but they're only limited pretty much to what they can find in store because this is not an item that can be ordered. So I called LV and they were able to locate the boutique that had the pochette accessory in the Damien Azor. I didn't have an essay there. And what I did, I literally just Googled or Instagram hashtag searched that boutique and I found a sales associate that worked there and I was able to do a charge send order. 
So that's just a trick for trying to find something that's hard to find from LV. But this is the pochette accessory, Dami Azor, inside has the white lining. The newer versions have a lining, canvas lining, and then it has a slip pocket here, which the older ones don't have. And I'll show that to you when I get to my monogram collection. This is a long crossbody strap from Dress Up Your Purse because this I always wear as a shoulder bag. It fits my phone and just all my essentials. And then the regular Vachetta strap. This hasn't darkened as much as I want it to, so I might kind of put this near my window so this gets darker faster because I just hate when it's that light vachetta. But yeah, that's the inside. Great little pochette that also doubles as a little purse. And my other small purse in my non-monogram collection is the Denim Mini Pleaty. This was from the Denim collection from the 2003, 2004, 2005, I think. I really like this entire collection. <laughs> this is the Mini Pleaty. They had a larger pleaty and then uh, another style was the baggy, which was kind of a hobo bag with a pocket. But I just love this little guy for going out. It has that koala nose little clasp. This was when Marc Jacobs, I believe, was the creative director and he really liked this little heavy duty clasp. So it opens up and it has that yellow suede lining. Here's the original dust bag. They used to have these kind of saddle camel brown dust bag colors with the felt. And then for some reason I have the newer one in here <laughs> so you can see the difference. There it is. There is the LV stamp on the slip pocket there. And that little round circle indicates that this was an employee purchase because I did purchase this while I was an employee at an astonishing 70% off retail. <laughs> so I don't even, I have no idea how much this retail for, but as employees purchase through the RTV system, which is the return to vendor system. I did a whole video talking about our employee perks, but I was able to get this for 70% off because it had some kind of a minor defect where we couldn't sell it to clients, but you know, employees could purchase it at 70% off. And I can't even tell you where the mark was. I always inspect bags that I purchased through the RTV employee system. And I literally couldn't find any flaw. <laughs> it's always like a very minor scratch or something on the hardware or the leather, but because it has any kind of imperfection, they sell it to employees for 70% off. And I know some people are laughing because you might buy a bag brand new and it still has an imperfection. So whatever, but we were able to get the 70 off as employees. There's the inside. I love this little bag. It's so cute. Has absolutely no shape when it's not stuffed. And moving on to tote bags. This is the Damier Aben Chelsea bag. I don't know what years this came from. <laughs> I've always liked this when I worked at LV, but I never purchased it. And then I purchased this recently from a vintage reseller for work. This is a great work tote. It has this very long extended zipper on both sides. It has adjustable shoulder straps that are kind of like on a belt system on both sides and the bottom is a very wide bottom even you can tell it's still pretty decent condition it's bent because of how i store it <laughs> on my shelves but there's the bottom and i'll go ahead and open up the zipper for you the zipper also can lock it has this right here with the they can overlap and then you put a lock but i would never lock this okay so when you open it up it has the signature kind of a red orange canvas lining. Here is the D-ring for attaching a key or keychain on there. And then one zip pocket right here. And you guys, I really like this for work. This is a great work bag. It fits tons of files. If it's a computer, I would carry my lunch in here. It took me a while to find this from a reseller because a lot of the ones I was looking at, you know, it's a workhorse tote bag. And so you can tell that it gets a lot of wear. But a lot of times what the defect was on this bag is the ends of the zipper have this snap, that snap here on the side. And I don't like to snap it even now, I just leave it loose because this snap would completely rip from the leather here and it was still attached to the metal. So it's like the metal was so strong that the snap would stay attached. And when you tried to pull it out, you literally ripped the leather around here. <laughs> so I was finding that there were a lot of these on the market, but they were broken and I didn't want any that had that. So I just leave it loosey goosey there. So yeah, once I started working from home remotely, I just pretty much stopped using this and it just kind of sits on my shelf. Okay, this is the Damier Géant Messager messenger bag in the tear color, which means earth, T-E, 
T-E-R-R-E. This is the darker brown. There's also a lighter like gray. This is from the men's collection and I absolutely loved, loved this bag. This was a time when the Abess messenger bag was popular and I just love this style. I love this design, this material. It's like a sporty fabric. There was a whole collection of duffel bag and rolling bags that they came out with in this. But this has gotten so much use. I use this all throughout college. I use this in law school. I carried my laptop, my textbooks in here. I love this bag. So here is the front. It's the flap opening. There's the top. It has a slip pocket here. There's a padded laptop compartment in the middle. And then I would keep my books over here and over here. It has two slip pockets right here. And then it has a magnetic snaps on both corners. And then the other side, this is a zip pocket and I just would keep all my snacks <laughs> when I was in school. Oh, I love this bag. I just have such great memories carrying this bag because I literally was probably the only college kid that I saw with this men's uh, messenger bag. I thought it was so cool. I love the, it's got like a brushed nickel hardware and the leather has aged so nicely. I love this honey brown color. And you can see that, yeah, this has definitely gotten a lot of wear. The corners are all frayed. I definitely got my money's worth from this bag. All the corners are fraying. Even though I really don't use this bag, I just can't see myself ever getting rid of it because I just have so many memories attached to this and I just love it. Okay, and then the last of my kind of vintage non-monogram bags. This is the Sack Amber PM. How cool is this bag? <laughs> I loved this entire collection. This was the PVC beach bag collection. Probably the most famous picture of this was, was Kim Kardashian had the square version. It was a rectangular, uh, I think it was called Mio Cabas. And it just is such a over the top Y2K <laughs> beach bag. It has this see-through PVC material and then it, it's lined with the leather. You can see I have a huge stain right there. <laughs> and then it has the gold feet. You know how we all love feet on the bottom of our bags. It has two leather shoulder handles and then they're attached with this tortoise shell like acrylic chain, which is just, I love, just, I love this. I think I got matching eyeglasses to match the tortoise shell. And then it has this pouch in the all of a shadow that attaches to it and it has a strap. And there is the D ring right there. You can see that I really, I don't know if I actually carried this to the beach, but I definitely use this a ton in the summer and I just, I just love it. So here's a close up of the pouch. It's really smoothed out over the years. You can see it's a little, even a little shiny, although this is technically an unfinished vachetta, but it's gotten shiny and patinaed over the years. And then inside is the natural leather and it's not smooth or anything. So it's very like leathery and kind of suede like. This is before the date code changed. This is LM0094. So this was made in September of 2004. The bottom of this bag is a really soft suede material and it is very dirty. There has been some kind of dust that's collected in the corners, but I just, what a cool bag. I never even noticed even the hardware rings say LV around it. You guys remember this bag? I love this. I should have gotten the bigger one and I, I really should have gotten that square one. That's just so gaudy. <laughs> and my most used non-monogram LV bag is definitely, definitely my LV Outdoor Messenger. This is from the men's collection. I have it in the monogram Eclipse with the black taiga leather and it has these oversized zipper pulls. I did an entire video reviewing this, showing what it fits. I love this, love this for just everyday errands. It fits everything I need. It has this very convenient pocket in the front. I absolutely love this bag. I can wear this all day and it's super comfortable because it has this very wide shoulder strap in the same monogram Eclipse. And then this is adjustable on both sides. This is always on my list for my most used bag for the year <laughs> ever since I got it because I just always grab this bag if I just need to run out. I just, I love it. I was considering getting this in another color because I like it so much and it's just so practical. It's a great mom bag. It can fit sippy cups. It can fit bottles, baby bottles. It fits a diaper and wipes. Just everything I need to run out of the house. I just love this. Can't say enough good things about this. It's such a great bag. And then we have the Denim Patchwork Neverfull. 
This is a very controversial bag because a lot of people <laughs> don't like this design, but I just really like it. I don't know, I love denim. I love the red accent, leather. It has a separate pouch that I can always use as just a wristlet. Same red leather handle. I just love this thing, you guys, right? If you like denim, you would love this. Even the interior has that striated denim look. You know how jeans looks like this from the inside? Like the unfinished, um, raw, untreated denim. I just love this. I love this little pouch. I love this bag. I don't use it as much because I am worried a little bit about the wear and tear for the denim and also it getting stained. But I did protect the entire bag with Scotchgard, like fabric protector. And it's been okay. I haven't had any stains or anything. Here is the bottom. And I just love this bag. It's the inside. The pocket there also has the red leather lining zip pocket and then it has that old timey LV script logo. This is the On The Go GM in the By The Pool limited edition collection in the blue. I fell in love with this bag when I saw it. <laughs> I just, I immediately ordered. I also have the matching romper from this collection. I just think it's so cool. I love blue. I love the gradient. I love the coloring. I love this little design. I considered getting this in the city's version where it has a city name in script like embroidered on here, but I opted for just this. There's the lining. I don't have a Samorga organizer for this one. I love that the on the go has the top handles and shoulder straps. I have this bag in the reverse monogram. So I already know that it's a bag that I just love the style. I love the design and layout of it. I love the multiple options to wear it as a top handle or shoulder bag. And I just thought that this would be such a great summer bag, isn't it? I mean, doesn't this just scream summer and like a summer getaway? This just makes me wanna go on vacation right now. I would probably get an organizer just to keep it organized. And also I don't really like when a tote has an open top, just especially when I'm traveling, but. So that is the On The Go GM from the By The Pool collection. All right, and we are starting off my LV monogram collection with my larger, and or uh, travel pieces. So uh, these three right here are my niece collection. I will start off with the oldest. So this is my original LV niece vanity train case. This is the full large size. I don't know what this retails for, but I got this when I worked at LV and I just love, love this. I have such sentimental value attached to this and I've brought it on all of my travels usually road trips, not really. <laughs> I don't really bring this on the plane. I just love the design. It has a mirror right here. It has this gusseted pocket. I have a Samorga organizer in here and it just is great. It has a shoulder strap that I have in my other niece for now, but you can attach a shoulder strap on here to you know, carry it a little more easily. But I just love this. It's great for displaying on your vanity also, if you wanna just keep it on your vanity and organize your daily makeup and skincare. So check out my videos where I show how I pack this. There is a kind of a false bottom that you can remove to make it easier to clean, but I have this Morgo organizer in here that just lives in here, keeps it nice and organized, and I just love this. And again, you can see the stamp there has that circle to show that it was an employee purchase. So fortunately I was able to get this for 70% off. So I'm not sure what this retails for. This is probably the closest that I have to a hard-sided piece. It's a little firm. It's not technically hard-sided. It's still kind of soft. The bottom is, the bottom feels kind of hard. And then I have the LV Nice BB. I did a recent video showing what I pack in my travel makeup and skincare bags. This is where I keep all my toiletries and skincare items. <laughs> so I still have some of the stuff inside. This strap actually goes with the full-size Nice but I keep it in here for now. I have some extra luggage tags, some Patchology eye gels. This is a convenient zip pocket for pencils and stuff. And it has that same wipeable lining. I love these organizers for all these bags because otherwise everything's just kind of getting jostled around, which I don't like. This luggage tag came from another bag and I just kind of put it on here. Unfortunately, this doesn't come with a luggage tag. The full size one does and so I just kind of stuck on there with my initial hot stamp there. And then Beverly Hills 
hot stamp. And this is the LV Nice Nano. This is so cute, so adorable. Look how tiny this is. It is a very cute and impractical <laughs> toiletry makeup bag. But I also have a Samorga organizer in here. This has removable Velcro if you want to just throw stuff in here. But I actually use this to keep minis, like a mini skincare. This also is great for just all your lip products if you want, but it's just super cute. This is a really cute tiny bag if you can attach a shoulder strap on here and wear it as a shoulder bag. You know, mini bags are very trendy right now. This unfortunately does not fit a cell phone. So for me, mini bags are cute, but I just can't use it as a bag because where am I gonna keep my phone? There is also a Nice something size, mini I think, which is in between the BB and the Nano. But I figured three Nice train cases are enough for me. This is an older Bucket GM. I just love how dark the Vachetta is. This actually is a little dirty because you can see how much darker this is compared to the rest of the bag. I have just a Kate Spade, Mr. and Mrs. keychain on here. I love this bag, this has feet. Not all LV bags have feet. The bucket came in two sizes and I just love the GM because it has this vertical height. So when you're wearing it over your shoulder, you're not you know, knocking things over on the shelves next to you with, when you have like a wide tote bag. Now this I actually did get from a Japanese reseller also. And fortunately I was able to bring it in and have the entire lining replaced. This has that vitonite lining that over time completely just breaks down and gets really sticky and gross, including inside the pockets. So I was able to purchase this for super cheap online and then I just brought it into my LV boutique and they replaced the entire lining and it didn't charge me anything. But I think it's usually like five or $600 to replace that. This is actually a great diaper bag because it just has kind of a small profile, again, because it's very narrow and tall. So you can just like stack all your diaper bag stuff in here. This is the Montsori GM. This is the largest of the Montsori bags. There's a MM medium size and then a PM that's really small. I just love this classic design. It's super comfortable to wear. It has this cool brass ring up at the top to carry it. And then the buckle closure here. I actually got a new drawstring from, I think it was from Organize My Bag. The original one has a slider to tighten it, but you can just tie it if you don't have that. Here's the bottom. It has a little bit of a stain and I just love how smooth the leather is. This doesn't have feet. It has all leather, but it's okay because eventually this kind of gets a patina and it gets nice and smooth and dark. The pocket's stuffed here. And then the inside of the bag has a slip pocket and then I just have stuffing right here. But yeah, this is a great bag also if you wanna be hands-free. I wish it had a water bottle pocket on the side. That's probably my biggest gripe is when backpacks don't have water bottle pockets because otherwise where do you keep your water bottle, you know? Next is my Cabas Mezzo tote bag. This thing has traveled with me everywhere. This is my most used monogram large bag. I got this years and years ago. I was an LV employee. I got this with my employee discount. When this came out, this was like the it LV tote bag. And it's great because it has a zip top. The Neverfull, I just was never a fan of it for a long time because I always had this and I just preferred this style. It has a really tiny pocket for <laughs> cell phones because that was when cell phones were very small back then. My phone doesn't fit in there now. And then the larger zip pocket along here. So that's where I keep my cell phone when I do wear this. The bottom is dirty, but you know, over time, the stains will kind of blend in together as this gets really, really dark. And I just absolutely love this bag. The shoulder straps are doing well, even though I wore this in college and when I was traveling by plane, I took this to the Philippines with me. I just love this bag. Some people who kind of really use and abuse these tote bags, the chapes, I think these are called, have ripped, but you can bring it in. And as long as the cannabis is okay, they are able to repair it and replace the chapes and maybe the shoulder straps. So hopefully this will still hold on. It seems to be doing well. Okay, it's over here. I knew it was ripped somewhere. So for me, this is ripping right here um, along the seam. The leather is tearing a little bit. So I try not to overstuff this bag because I don't want the tear to get any worse. And this came in two sizes. It came in the Cabas PM. I actually did get the Cabas PM also. I gave that to my mom. And then the Cabas Alto is a bigger size. And that one I didn't really like because it has a completely open top. The Cabas Alto was like before the Neverfull came out, so. And this is my 
one and only Monogram LV Keep All. And I have this in the 55. I used to own the largest size, which is the 60. It was huge. I only brought it on road trips. I eventually, I got rid of it because it was so big and I wanted something smaller. So I got the 55 and now I am thinking I want to add a 45 to my collection because I want to carry it on the plane, you know, as a carry-on bag. But this one I primarily just use for road trips. I don't really carry it on the plane just because I would never want to have to check it. And I've seen horror stories of the keep all just getting torn up when it's on the baggage conveyor belt and whatnot. So yeah, this is the 55 and it is very dirty and gross on the bottom. I think if I get it in the 45 size, I would get the, I forget what it's called, but the monogram with the black leather, I think. But so this is my only huge official LV luggage. I used to own the rolling Pegas luggage and I sold that also because it was so heavy and just so impractical for travel. But yeah, the keep all. Do you guys have a keep all? What size do you recommend? I have it stuffed with like shoe boxes and stuff to keep the shape. So these are my large LV monogram travel bags. Okay, and we have finally come to the last set of my LV monogram bags. These are my kind of smaller and just most used LV bags. But before we get to these, I wanted to real quick show you, I completely forgot about these little Fendi pouches. This was the Fendi Nano Baguette. I just have to show this because it is so cute. I had also gotten this in the like micro nano or whatever the size is. It's even smaller than this in the gold mesh. So that is a, a little mini Fendi bag. <laughs> and then I have these two Fendi Skims pouches. This is part of the Fendi Skims collab. I did two kind of shopping vlogs showing what I got from the Fendi Skims collab. I just loved everything that they had and I picked up actually three pouches. This is the smallest one. And then I got this larger one in this color and also in purple, which is downstairs in my travel bags right now because we had just come back from my trip. And I used the larger pink one to hold my Dr. Dennis Gross face mask. So anyway, but yeah, I love these little Fendi pouches. So I consider this part of my bag collection also because you can always add a strap to the little loops here on the side. I wear it as a wristlet. I just love this. Okay, now with this final set of LV bags, I wanted to first kick it off with this bag that I have never before shown on my channel because I just got it. It is the League of Legends bum bag. And I was shocked when this popped up on the 24S website, LVMH owns 24S. And I was actually able to get it for, I think another 10% off. And so I just jumped and got it because I have been considering getting the bum bag and I like the blue. I mean, I'm not a League of Legends fan at all, but I just decided to get this. This I'm kind of not sure about. <laughs> so I just figured I'm doing this collection. I just wanted to include this in my collection video because I did just get it. But if I'm being honest, I'm really not 100% sure I'm gonna keep it. I still have all the tags and everything on here, but I just, I'm not sure guys, I'm not sure. Let me, I'll do some mod shots for you later, but let me know what you guys think of this. The bum bag is supposedly being discontinued and it's a little hard to find. And I just thought, you know, I like that it's a little different. So we'll try it out. I think I could probably style this and wear this as just an everyday bum bag. My biggest concern is the white part of the canvas. I just wouldn't want it to get dirty. And it's just in such broad areas, you know, in parts that would get dirty and scuffed. So yeah, we'll see. I also find the zipper is a little bit hard to get in and out of. I like the zipper pull. I think that's kind of cool, but, but yeah, I'm not sure. So we'll see. There's a top handle. So technically I do have an LV bum bag in my collection, but we'll see if this will make the cut. And again, before I get to these, I wanted to show you kind of these SLGs that I also could use as bags. <laughs> this is the toiletry bag 25. I showed this in my recent what's in my travel skincare and makeup bags. This is where I keep my makeup. And then I have never shown this on my channel either. <laughs> this is the LV Truce 28. I just got this from I think Fashion File. And I just think it makes such a great little buddy to the toiletry bag. It fits a little more. This is the 28 versus the 25 size. And this is just such a classic shape. This gets a lot of great reviews because it's a great travel bag. And so I 
I'm glad that I was able to find it. You can tell the canvas is a little different because this almost looks green in that old canvas versus the new toiletry 25. I have all three sizes of the toiletry pouch. And I think this is officially has been discontinued. They took it off their website and I think they're redesigning it and bringing it back out with a higher price tag, of course. But with the larger size, I do have the organizer with the chain to convert it to a crossbody if you want. And then I have a little tassel there. And then I have the two smaller sizes. So this is great for your everyday purse. These you can use for traveling or just, you know, as a little crossbody if you want. And my two, Pochette accessories, I have the limited edition Vivienne in Venice with the blue. I just really love that little blue Venice canal scene on the monogram mini pochette accessory. I like that the tag is also blue. And then inside, this is my everyday purse like essentials. The interior is also blue and then I just keep my powder, hand cream, chapstick. So I can just throw this in my larger purse. It, this makes it a lot easier to switch purses out because I just have all my daily essentials in here. This is the regular sized pochette accessory in the limited edition Cerise collection. And you can see the original design didn't have the lining, so it's completely unlined. This is very dirty. I have used this for so long. And I added a crossbody strap here. The original shoulder strap is, I think, long gone. It's gotten very dirty over the years. It, and then it, eventually it separates because it's just one little wristlet strap and it doesn't have any seams or anything, but the newer pochette accessory has a really nice seamed shoulder strap. This is not an LV strap. This is from Dress Up Your Purse because I like to wear this as a crossbody. The pochette Florentine, I showed this in my video of LV perks and you know everything that I got from working at LV, including all the accessories and all the other stuff that I got to keep. This was actually our employee bag at the time that I worked for LV. This is the Pichette Florentine. It has my name <laughs> still in there. And then this belt strap, and then you can wear this around your waist as a belt bag. It is super cute. I use this throughout all my years working for LV and I used to wear this going out. This again was when phones were very tiny and so this was able to hold my phone. This is the Palm Springs Mini. And this is the original one. They redesigned it so that the zipper is a lot easier to get into because this is very difficult sometimes. <laughs> it's hard to get into one-handed. Sometimes you really need to fumble around with it and hold it in place to get the zipper open and closed. I like to wear this mostly as a crossbody, even though it is technically a mini backpack, but I just like to pretty much just wear the shoulder strap over here and then wear it as a crossbody bag. This front pocket is just completely useless for me. I don't even unzip it because it's so hard to get into with this lip over here. I literally keep sometimes chapstick, but even that's hard to get <laughs> if you keep chapstick in there. Hair ties, bobby pins, I keep in there. Okay, relatively new to my collection. This is the newly redesigned LV Boulogne. I did a review about this and showed what it fits and how these straps work. I like that this has the chain strap here if you wanna wear it as a shoulder bag. And then you can have this as a crossbody. This has really cool snaps that adjust so that there's no extra leather snaps kind of dangling around. So I thought that was very innovative shoulder strap design. I really like this. I got this for myself as my resignation <laughs> celebration present when I resigned from my corporate law job last year. And I've been using this a lot. It's a great hands-free, like daily errand mom bag. The LV On The Go GM in the reverse monogram. I use this as my work bag every single day from the day I got this to the day that I started working remotely when COVID hit. But I just love this bag. And I added this really cute pearl chain here just to decorate it. I have a Samorga organizer in here. I have the original version where it has the same reverse monogram shoulder straps. They changed it now, so it's all black leather, which I don't like the look as much, but I understand, you know, they don't want the, this to crack eventually, so they have it as the leather shoulder straps. I just really like this, it's so cool. This is a great just everyday workhorse tote bag. And it is also a great travel bag, but for me, I probably wouldn't use this as an airplane travel bag because it's so stiff. <laughs> I like to be able to kind of like smush a bag down if I need to under the seat and whatnot. So this is a great road trip bag for me and just like an everyday bag. I like the some more of an organizer in here. It has the same matching red felt to match the red interior. 
water bottle pocket. Such a great bag. I really like this one. Back here, I have my LV Speedy Monogram in the size 35. And I had this custom painted by KK Leather Goods is her name. Kristen, I just love her work. She is just so talented. <laughs> you guys have to check her out. I love her work. I love the Aquarelle collection. And so I requested that this be custom painted in that similar Aquarelle design, but in blue. And uh, she just really came through. She did such a great job. I definitely recommend checking her out if you want any of your monogram bags to be custom painted. She can come up with custom designs. She's She's got some really cool stuff, so yeah. Next in my Speedy collection, this is my very first LV bag that I ever purchased. This is the LV Speedy 25. And I got this when I was still in high school. I hadn't worked at LV yet. I paid full price for this. You guys will die when you find out how much this was. So in 2000, 2000 I think, or 2001, I got this brand new from the boutique for $525. And then I remember that the then the next size up, like so the Speedy 30 was another 25, like it was another 25 with every, you know, centimeters <laughs> that you go up. And oh, it's so cute. I love this bag. I have so many memories using this bag. I was so proud of myself because I worked all through high school. I was a waitress and I just saved up and I was able to grab this. So I still have it. I will never sell this. I just have such fond memories of this. This was before the Speedy Bundelier version came out with the shoulder straps, but I just love this and I use this all throughout my like senior year of high school. <laughs> and then the final bag in my Speedy collection is the Speedy Nano. And this is the one that has the shoulder strap that is completely still attached on here. Some people cut that off if they don't like it, but I don't mind it. And I do mind, however, that unfortunately this doesn't really carry much and it barely, barely fits my phone. And when I say barely, I mean it does, but I don't think it's safe <laughs> to have it just shove it in, in and out. And I feel like I'm about to tear the zipper every time I take my phone in and out. I have even a Samorga little organizer in there to maintain the base shape. And yeah, they have since come out with the Speedy 20, which is like a step up from this. And I think that's really cute, but this is the Speedy Nano, super cute. Super cute crossbody, a little iffy on whether it is able to easily store a iPhone 12 Pro Max. I would say not really, but just barely. <laughs> Another controversial bag that some people either love or hate. This is the multi pochette accessoire in the pink color, the pink shoulder strap. This bag was so cool i still use it and what i love about this is that i was able to get this i was able to pre-order it before it came out and so i was able to get it before the price went up because when they announced this that's when my essay was taking pre-orders for it so i was able to get this for it was something like 1540. it definitely was in the 1500s because even before it officially launched this was september of 2019 even before it launched they raised the price so then it went up to like 16 something and I was so glad that I was able to get it for the 1500. The price now is just so crazy. It's something like 2100 or 2300. I don't even know. I hate the price increases, but I just love that I was able to grab it in the pink. I love the pink shoulder strap. I love the different kind of a little variation on the pochette accessories. So you have the full size pochette, although this is larger than the mini pochette and then larger than the regular pochette accessory. It has this chain. It's got this really cute coin purse. So yeah, very versatile. I did a video showing how you can kind of do a DIY with your existing pouches to make this style. And I like that you can take the strap and add it to your other bags if you want. And also I, I didn't have this, so I, now I have the little coin purse, so. And the Pochette Matisse in the reverse monogram. I was able to walk into the store and just buy this that day. <laughs> it just came in and this was such a hot commodity. I think even today it's still very hard to find. And fortunately, my essay was able to grab it for me. And initially I was looking at the regular monogram where it was just all regular monogram. And then this was the Vachetta. But when this came in, I tried it on and I was like, oh my God, it is actually really cute. So in hindsight, I'm glad that I got this because I like that it has the black treated leather instead of the natural Vachetta leather. I love this back pocket. This bag has, I have traveled all over with it. I still have the sticker on here. Okay, don't judge me but I just love this. I have the shoulder strap right here, the dust bag. This has everything. This fits everything. Super cute, great for travel because it packs flat. You can use this as your everyday crossbody. 
if it's a lot, if it's a baby bottle, that was like my one criteria when I was searching for bags <laughs> for a long time because I have three boys and the youngest is still, he, he still uses a bottle sometimes, but we're trying to wean him off of it. But yeah, I needed a, to be able to hold a baby bottle and this was just perfect. And it's in great condition. This is the Manhattan PM. I love, love this bag. This is my official date night bag. I only bust this out just the few times my husband and I can go out to dinner because it's a little impractical, you know, as an everyday bag. This is more like an evening bag, but edgy, like an edgy evening bag. I love these pockets. Again, this is when Marc Jacobs was the creative director. So it has these really cool pockets with that really satisfying click. It's just such a dainty, like ladylike shape, but it's able to fit a lot. So there's the inside. It has that Alcantara suede microfiber lining and the slip pocket. So yeah, I just use this when I'm going out, when I don't have to worry about dealing with the kids because I just like to carry this on my arm. There is the hardware. I was considering getting the GM size. It is very heavy. It is, this is a heavy bag. I mean, even this, it's the PM size, but the hardware, you know, all the, all the brass, this is oversized and chunky. It is kind of heavy, but it's just so cute. Yeah, so, and then last but not least is my LV World Tour Neverfull. This is a custom order. I have the custom LV Manila stamp here. And then on the back, I have my custom stamps that I chose for here. So I have the Statue of Liberty, the LV Heritage stamp with my name, the other LV Heritage lock stamp, and then the lipstick <laughs> because I just love makeup. I did a video reviewing this and kind of my thought process behind all the stamps and the pricing has changed so much over the years. I got this a few years ago and it came in pretty quickly. So I'm glad that I have this. I think this was my first Neverfull that I added to my collection because I just wasn't a huge fan of, of the Neverfull, but I like that I could get it custom ordered. Even the pouch here has that same Manila stamp for the Philippines. And then on the back right there, the Statue of Liberty and the lock and the lipstick. So I highly suggest if you're looking for a custom bag or if you just wanted the leather, you can always get the world tour version and then just maybe don't pick as many stamps. You, you just have to get one, I think, like one stamp, but you can leave everything else plain if you didn't want it customized. But I like all those stamps that I chose. I just feel like it really represents me and my people, Manila. All right, and that is my entire bag collection. This was quite an undertaking. I had to film this over the course of several days because it took me a while to even find some of these bags. I'm not the most organized person, guys, okay? Look at the name of my channel. I'm just a mess. But I was able to finally just put it all together in one video for you. I really hope you enjoyed going through my bag collection with me. I am most likely going to be downsizing my collection. I just have so many that I really don't reach for and some that I'm just considering moving out of my collection and will probably resell or re-gift or something, so. But I really hope you enjoyed this collection video. Thank you so much for coming along my bag journey with me and reminiscing <laughs> with some of these older styles. Let me know if you recognize the older ones. Also, let me know if you have any of these older bags. They're just, a lot of them are so unique and they're so different. I just really like the quality of the bags from back in the day, but I hope you enjoyed my bag collection. Thanks so much for watching and I will catch you in my next video. Bye.